Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we got Britney back in the house. A lot of y'all really loved this set, so I'm so sad to see it go. But we are officially transitioning into the holiday season and this is mine and Britney's favorite. She kills it with her design request, so I'm so excited to get into doing her nails. So we're gonna be starting off by just removing her current design. We are going to get rid of this beautiful green and this beautiful pink design that we had on her. I'm going to be simply doing an acrylic fill for her nails, and then we're gonna go in with some fun nail art. So for this process, I'm using a light amount of pressure when doing this. I'm simply trying to take off that top coat and the gel design, and I am using my e file at about a speed of 11,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using a five-in-one bit from Kiara Sky, which is my all-time favorite. I got it in the color black, but they have other colors as well available. So again, very light motions when doing this. I am not trying to debulk the nail. Simply remove that design and the top coat. I am going to be removing her lifted areas as well. She had a little bit on her middle finger and then a smidge on her index finger as well. She ended up going way longer than we typically do between appointments because my entire household was so sick. I don't know what the heck happened, but we were all extremely sick for an entire week. So hopefully y'all are not going through the same thing because that was terrible. We are doing better now and we are thriving. We are nice and healthy. We're back to work, so definitely happy to get her back in. But we're gonna go in now and prep her natural nail. I'm going to be using this small mandrel bit from Kiara Sky. It is definitely one of my go-to nails. And I'm using a medium grit sanding band with that. I'm just gonna be focusing on that cuticle area, making sure that I fully remove all the rested lifted area and prepping her nail by simply just buffing off that shine from her natural nail. Very, very light motion. I have my e-file at a speed of 4,000 RPMs. Be extra careful with this. And if you have been following the journey of me doing her nails, or if you are new, she had a little mishap with a possible allergic reaction in the past. We have now gotten that under control. Quick little update if you haven't seen seen yet. We switched her products to Hema Free Primer and Hema Free Monomer and that seemed to do the trick. Her cuticles are no longer inflamed but we are still avoiding that cuticle work just to be safe. So I am just going to be focusing on her natural nails. I'm gonna be taking this diamond bit from Profiles Backstage, still at a speed of 4,000 RPMs. I'm taking that very quickly since I'm avoiding her cuticles. I still want to like fully try to push back her cuticle as much as possible or her skin in that area without touching it too much, if that makes sense. And since this is less harsh in comparison to my sanding band, definitely just sticking to that. So next I'm gonna be going in with the acrylic primer from Kiara Sky. And I'm just gonna be focusing on placing that on the grown out areas. And pretty much this has done a huge difference with her reaction to the products that I was using. So if you notice your cuticles are getting a little bit of a reaction, definitely try to switch to Hema Free products before it's too late. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I'm gonna be going in with my acrylic brush from Not Polished. This one is in a size 12. Along with that, I'm using the color Nude Me. It is one of my favorite nude colors from Not Polished. Definitely recommend it. I'm just gonna be placing about a medium bead of acrylic right in the outgrown portion. Holding that finger downwards, I'm gonna be blending that down. And I'm also gonna be slightly rebalancing her nail as well. As the nail grows out, you wanna make sure that you are rebalancing it the whole way because you never know where it might be a little too thin or a little too thick. So I wanna make sure that everything is just perfectly placed and the thickness is perfect as well. I wanna make sure that I am holding the finger downward always, always, always. And then if you feel like you need to add a little bit more acrylic like I'm doing here, definitely do so. Better to add a little bit more acrylic than too little because you can always just file it down, but trying to go back in after you've already filed to add more is definitely not fun to deal with. So I'm gonna go in again, rebalance the rest of the nail just in case and make sure everything flows nicely from the cuticle down towards the tip. Once everything is nice and dry, we're gonna go in and file. I'm starting off with my e-file and my five in one bit, both from Kiara Sky. My e-file speed is at about 10,000 RPMs. And I'm gonna be using that medium grit bit to just smooth out the surface and blend that acrylic nicely to her cuticle area. You wanna make sure that it is a nice and flush to her natural nail. And then I'm gonna be taking my hand file and filing the rest of the way. I do lightly file the surface with my e-file sometimes, but lately I've definitely been gravitating towards my hand file just because I find the process so satisfying to do. Just seeing everything smooth out perfectly brings so much joy to me. So I've been opting for that more than using my e-file. I'm taking my hand file and we're gonna be filing those sides, making sure everything is nice and crisp. And then I'm gonna directly after that, go into the surface of the nail. And I just feel like it allows me to get everything a lot smoother, especially with longer nails. I feel more comfortable using my e-file for the finish filing on short nails, but with long nails, just using a hand file just makes everything a lot quicker. Everything is a lot smoother. You don't have to worry about no extra divots that you're creating with your e-file. It can sometimes be very tricky for especially beginner nail techs to use the same amount of pressure throughout the entire process. So if you are struggling or you just don't like it, do not worry about it and just go back to using a hand file. It definitely makes a huge difference and you'll just be a lot more comfortable and a lot happier.
I'm gonna be going in very quickly with my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage, and we're gonna be buffing that surface of the nail, making sure everything is super, super smooth in preparation for our nail art. And then you can always have your client go wash their hands, but I like to use a lint-free wipe and a little bit of Young Nail Swipe to cleanse that surface. It just removes any extra oils, like if she touched her hair or if she you know, got into her bag, you don't know what transfers. It's nice to just remove all that dust and remove anything off of the surface of that nail. Now your girl completely bypassed the fact that she wanted two nails black. So I know this is like a very rare scene event on my channel because I do use a lot more colored acrylic than anything, honestly. But we're just gonna have to settle and use some gel polish for those nails. Did I cringe while I was doing it? Definitely, but the smooth application of that gel polish just looked so good. So I couldn't even be mad. Next, I'm taking the short liner from Vita Bella and I'm actually gonna be making sure that that cuticle area is nice and perfect. So I am placing that gel polish a little bit further out and then I'm just going all the way up towards the skin with my liner brush. That way I don't have to worry about getting the gel polish on the skin because if you've ever worked with dark colors such as black, red, or anything like that, it stains so easily. So I wanna make sure that I avoid it and I don't have to do extra amount of cleaning. Now if I did get any spillage, I would just go in with the Vita Bella Oopsie brush. It does all the wonders. And y'all see it in action a little bit later once I'm doing nail art. I absolutely love using that brush for mistakes and just fixing some designs in general. Always wipe those sides after gel application. You wanna make sure that it's not messing up your shape or it's not overflowed on the sides. I did wipe off the tacky layer a smidge and we're gonna go straight into our design. So we're gonna be doing a scream mask on this nail on both hands, but again, I'm just showing you the process on one hand. So I'm gonna start off by outlining the eye part and I find that just easier, especially when I'm gonna be doing designs with like a full color on the rest of it. Doing the outline of one of the bigger things on the nail art just makes a huge difference to me. If you struggle with nail art, definitely find ways to kind of simplify the design to make your life a little bit easier. I've been kind of experimenting with that process myself just to see what works better for me. Sometimes outlining works better depending on the design, but then sometimes color blocking just works and makes more sense to me. So really just mess around with the process for this one specifically. I thought it would be a lot easier to just go in and outline the black portion of the design and then infill the rest as I went. And it just went a lot smoother that way. So you see me kind of outlining the nose part and then the mouth part as well. And then we're just gonna infill the rest and it just made it so much easier. I am using the short liner from Vita Bella for this process and for most of the nail art, it has double sides. So it has one side a little bit shorter and the other side a little bit longer. And it's just such a good brush to use for really any nail art. The bristles are super thin as well. So if you wanted to do outlines or little tiny details, you can achieve that easily with this brush as well. Now I figured I would fix this little mistake that I did. My hand twitched a little bit and I got a little bit too much white on the black portion. And then I also decided to make that area a little bit bigger just because I felt like it would 
just make a little bit more sense. I'm using the pointy end from the Oopsie brush from Vita Bella. And we're just gonna use a little bit of Young Nail Swipe on it, like the smallest amount, just enough to like be able to carve that out and not oversaturate it. So do note that it is a very small amount. Next, we're gonna be going on to the ring finger and I'm gonna be doing another mask. This time, we're gonna be doing the full outline and then outlining the eye and just simply infilling the rest of that. And then we're gonna go in with the black details. This just makes more sense than trying to go around every single little dot that you have to create. So again, always just mess around with your process and whatever feels better, do that. Now per usual, cure in the light for a full 60 seconds, especially when you are using very pigmented polishes like black or really anything that is super opaque, full coverage and one coat type of products, cure that for an entire 60 seconds. If your light has the option for 90 seconds, definitely do that instead as well. Now, since I don't have dotting tools because I got rid of them and I never replaced them, I'm gonna be using the back end of this bit that I have. It was like the perfect thickness, so I just figured I would go ahead and use that. And we're just gonna be using that to make our dots. And then I'm gonna be taking red gel paint as well, and we're gonna be creating those little lines on the mask. Super, super simple, very, very easy to create. Now I started doing the spider webs using gel polish, a black gel polish with the long liner from Vita Bella. And y'all, when I tell you guys I had a glitch and completely forgot that I had black gel paint. So then we're gonna switch over to our black gel paint and use that to deepen up and darken up those lines. So I don't know what the heck was going on, but I use the long liner for the lines and then I'm going in and adding the little spider web details using the micro detail brush from Vita Bella as well. And then we're just gonna make sure that we deepen all that up. I don't know what happened. Y'all can see the difference between the long lines versus the little details in the swoops. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened. I don't even, I have zero explanation other than I had a brain fart and I completely forgot that I could just use a dark gel paint. So we're gonna be doing just that, finishing off that as well. You can see me here darkening up those lines, making them nice and dark black. And then we're gonna be popping that in the light again for a full 60 seconds. For these accent nails, I ended up doing spider webs on the pinky, middle finger, and the thumb. We're gonna be adding some blood splatter to that, which I feel like just brought everything together and it looked so good. We're using the deep red jelly polish from Profiles Backstage, and I'm pretty much just like wiggling my brush on there randomly to create those blood splatters. I cringe at the thought of blowing the paint onto her fingers. So I just prefer this method. I feel like it looks good. Maybe it could look a little bit better, but it does a job and I'm not throwing spit all over her nails. So it's just my preference. I took the black gel jelly polish from Profiles Backstage as well and added a little bit of shading around the eye part just to add some texture to that mask. Pop that in the light for full 60 seconds. Now I'm going in with a stain resistant top coat from Young Nails. We're gonna protect her nails and the design. She does smoke, so wanna make sure that the stains that she gets on her nails are minimal to none. So I'm just lathering that on, making sure I fully saturate those nails. And then right before you cure, always wipe those sides and cure for a full 60 seconds. But that pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a ton and I'll see you guys next time.